I love photography. It's what I've been passionate about my entire life and I'm more excited about today than ever. I was walking around Manhattan Beach last summer and I heard a girl shout out, I'll kiss you if you jump. And I immediately had to bring my camera to my eye and see what was happening and tell that story. I think photography at its best does what great literature does. It doesn't just mark time, but deepens our understanding of it. Approximately 80% of everything we perceive in the world comes through our perception through sight. Most of us have not seen the pyramids, but we know about the pyramids through photographic imagery. The majority of our understanding of the world comes through photographic images. So the brain processes images and forms an understanding of the world. Well, when we think about the sheer volume of photographic imagery that is both produced and consumed in our culture, there is approximately over 200,000 images uploaded to social media every minute. Last year alone, there was approximately 880 billion photographic images uh, produced. And the way human culture is shaped and formed is primarily through mimicry, through seeing something over and over and over and adopting attitudes and behaviors. The average American is bombarded with two to 3,000 photographic images related to advertising alone, and up to 10,000 images per day, depending upon how many hours of television. What does this all mean? How does photography influence our understanding of our world, or ourselves? So I'm introducing a new quarterly journal about photography and culture titled IDOS. The word IDOS means the shape or form that ideas take, and I thought that was an appropriate name because of the role that photography plays in forming culture. We use photography to create meaning in our lives. We document virtually every moment and share it with others to say, this is my life. So I started looking at how technology was beginning to uh, impact our expectations and our behaviors. And I started paying attention to advertising media that was advertising all this new digital photography technology where the expectation was that you would not only produce an image, but you would immediately retouch it, you would immediately transmit it. Um, and, and the time lapse between the making an image, thinking about what you're doing, and publishing it has shrunk down to zero. We now instinctively or almost habitually just pull out a cell phone and snap a photo and share it. And I wanted to just hit that pause button and create this sort of philosophical gap for us to reflect on what it is we're actually doing and what this technology really means to us. I started accumulating some research as well as um, visual imagery that I think the goal is to kind of reawaken an awareness of what photography truly is, what the pushing the button means, and also with an idea of wanting to raise our um, appreciation for ourselves and our daily lives through photographic imagery. I'm really proud and excited about the printed journal because I'm having it printed back in New York with a company that specializes in museum quality reproductions. And so for this first issue to have something that's being printed in black and white that is really truly black and white and not this mixture of CMYK ink colors um, is a testimony to the quality that we're committed to. In addition to that, I'm extremely excited that the technology for e-publications has finally come about to achieve the vision I have for this publication. If you choose to download the e-version, you will have a similar experience, very, very similar experience, almost identical to having that physical uh, book in your hand because it allows you to swipe through the pages and see the pages turn. 
uh, and yet it also adds this tactile experience of seeing computer screen backlit imagery that you can tactilely move around, you can zoom in on it, much like you're holding a physical print that you can actually move your eyes closer or back from to examine it. Technology is shaping our attitudes and our behaviors. Whether it's a drive-through espresso stand with the yellow painted stripes that tell us where to go, or whether it's the cell phone camera app that tells us that we can retouch it, we can add color, we can saturate the color. Technology is influencing behavior. Everybody is walking around with a camera in their pocket and so now we are creating uh, this sort of spectacle of being photographed and photographing each other and that's literally changing our public behavior as well as our understanding of our self-identity. I've worked as a commercial photographer doing advertising photography. I've worked as a commercial photographer doing portraiture and helping people share a sense of connection through family portraits, wedding photography, and understand the human psychology related to images. And I've worked as a college photography instructor for 17 years where I have done the academic research and study uh, of the craft and as well as the theory of photography that I feel like the timing is finally right that through this journal I'm able to bring all the skill sets that I've accumulated in my career to bear. Uh, I love to write, I love to do research, I love to create fine art and continue to practice my own uh, work with film-based photography and darkroom-based photography in my home studio as well as work with the latest digital technology and video production and storytelling as well. And so I'm bringing all those things together uh, in a uh, format of a publication that actually is in alignment with who I am uh, in general, where I'm teaching something new every quarter. And so with that, I want to bring something new to you in the publication of IDOS every quarter. And I feel uniquely situated in that I have grown up around photography. I'm a second generation photographer. Uh, I grew up taking cameras apart in my father's camera repair shop in Los Angeles. And I was an early adopter of digital technology. Saw that transformation of film photography to digital photography. And after all this time, I am more excited about photography than ever. I love throwing dinner parties. I love bringing mixtures of people together, and artists, musicians, and writers. And I think one of the things I'm most excited about is that I have something I want to share with people that is affordable, that you know, not everybody is going to travel uh, around the country to galleries to see this work but they can get access to it and they can have a little piece of me and, and my work uh, at a very modest price. And, uh, and I just, after all these years of being involved in this photography and people wanting to know what's Ira doing, um, now they get to, to see what I've been working on. I think of it as kind of like for less than the cost of a meal, you get this entire dinner party coming to you of, of intellectual conversation and uh, a little humor, a little laughter, and I'm bringing this party of images and ideas and people together uh, for you to enjoy. And I think that's, to me, what I'm most excited about is this idea of just being able to share uh, who I am and what I do and what I love.